Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the 50 Questions Friday for April 24th of 2020. Um, thank you guys for being here. And let's see. Hey, good morning. All right. Um, we'll start off with some questions from the internet. Um, you know, and still we're getting a lot of the questions on regards to, you know, tensor tool construction. And those are ones that I'd rather do individually with people because everybody's at a different level in making. Um, some people need coached on more of the, the internal connections clearing and the template stuff versus the physical construction stuff. So I just want to make sure everybody's on the right page. If I do anything like that, I'd rather not do it publicly. Um, so anyway, our one of our questions is, how do you know the golden wand and tensor rings work? Um, so as far as how you can, how you know that the tools are doing something from a scientific standpoint, uh, the gals at Dances with Water, the new Science of Water, I have their book, but it's back underneath of everything. So the gals at Dancing with Water have done a lot of the studies showing what the tensor fields are doing with water, showing how it brings it to its original crystalline structure. Um, it's actually making it lighter in weight in the lab. It's putting such a spin rate to the molecules within the water that it oscillates in and out of physical reality. Ormus, white powder gold, it's, it's creating Ormus in the water. So for, for water, um, you can show scientifically what it's doing. Um, otherwise, as far as the science goes, there is GDV photoimaging that can show a magnetic field. It's really expensive photoimaging, but we did some photoimaging about six, seven, eight years ago that shows a tensor ring in the field that comes from it. And then it also shows magnetic fields on this photoimaging. And it shows that when you put a magnet inside of the tensor ring that the fields disappear from from the magnet um it, it's really kind of a cool thing but as far as the other scientific ways that we know that the tensor fields and such are working is through biofeedback um there are all of the machines that can register how the human body is functioning physical mental emotional and then when we start to use the rings with the person then it is shifting physical mental emotional and that's what we did with the the cell phone study that we did in 2015 which we're working on getting a new cell phone study done one that we actually own the rights to that we can publish um that shows basically the same thing what is doing to the physical mental emotional making organs function better all that good stuff but anyway, that's kind of the scientific things that you can see. But otherwise, we see, feel, know energy. And there are many people out there that do. So if you read the testimonials too, you'll see the people who see, feel, know the energy and what it's doing. Um, so that's kind of how we know how that these things are actually working is all those various ways that we just, you know, talked about there. Um, okay, and then the one big thing that we, that I forgot to do this morning, and hello everybody, is go into the sacred space of the heart and hold that field for everybody who is here and who will ever be watching this. So if you'd like to join and go into the heart space with me, quick, simple, easy meditation for anybody who has never done meditation or gone into the sacred space of the heart is simply moving our consciousness from here where it is affected by survival, ego, emotions, all of that, and moving the consciousness down into the heart. Because within the physical heart, there are brain cells within the heart. That is where our consciousness began. So we move our consciousness back into the sacred space of the heart with three simple breaths. So here we go. You can close your eyes or leave them open if you wish. So just putting your attention onto your physical heart and taking a breath from the earth, that energy of earth, that loving healing energy, breathing that up through your feet and right into your heart. Another breath from source, soul, 
creation, God, however you see and say that, breathe that healing, loving energy into the heart. And the third breath, breathe in the end both from earth and from sky, bringing both those together within you. They meet together within the heart. From there, that light within your heart is grounded to the earth, is connected to creation. And that automatically moves your consciousness into the heart space. All right, so our other question here. Um, how did you come up with the idea of these tools? So these tools are based on Slim Sperling is the one who is the, the famous well-known person. He's actually from South Dakota as well. Um, so Slim in the early 90s and another group of friends, um, they, they all worked together and they discovered the tensor rings based on cubit measures that another gentleman found these cubit measures that came from the above the king's chamber in Egypt. And these specific cubit measures, some of them were like straight line antennas, kind of like a ham radio, where you take something that's in a solid straight line that has a flow of energy in it called piezoelectric flow, which you find in wire, you find in trees, things like that in nature. And so you take this length and you cut it to these specific measures and one of these measures actually creates the sine wave of the hydrogen atom, which is 8.3 inches. So there was a sacred cubit that was known from the king's chamber that's like 25 point some inches long. And that produces those sine waves of the hydrogen atom. So their frequencies. There was one of the measures there that actually created a, a frequency when you bring it together in a closed loop coil. And that was the royal cubit, as the gentleman who discovered these called it. And then Slim later called it the sacred cubit, which brought to a lot of um, misunderstandings because there is two cubits named sacred cubit from the Great Pyramids. Uh, one of them makes a straight line frequency only. One of them Slim brought together to make the original rings of the 144 megahertz frequency rings. Um, so Slim passed away in 2007. I started working with Slim in 2010 and, um, I was introduced to him in the ethers and he started teaching me how to make the tools and away we go. So that's, that's how the original tensor rings came, came through and how I started to utilize them. The rest of the tools like the golden and fire and light one, that is things that I worked with my sister, uh, Brenda Schnoes, who channels the Elders 3. She channels her soul more, and she does the Elders 3 anymore. Um, and she is one of the most phenomenal energy workers that I know of on the planet because she's very much in the heart. She does not connect from here to where we get taken down funny rabbit holes. Brenda is one of the very few people that I know that is connected fully to here, to the heart. And within the heart, you are in alignment and um, you're in alignment with that higher knowing, that higher reality, instead of being taken down, like I say, the different rabbit holes. So Brenda and I through the years have worked on creating those tools together. Um, and then what is the difference between different tensor rings? So again, it goes back to the cubit measures. Here's the harmonic creation field trio. We have the golden fire ring. We have the 333 megahertz or earth resonance ring and the regeneration ring. Now these three are all based on their cubit measures that create them. So the golden fire has a very specific measurement for that cubit measure, as does the 333, as does the harmony, all of those. So basically, when you create a tensor ring, they are creating the tensor field. And so what is within this field, there are certain bandwidths within these fields. These fields, you can just imagine them as a plane, this empty plane in here but then within it is all these different frequencies and properties. So like the 333 megahertz, it has a bandwidth 
right here that it will hold all those frequencies and properties within it. Then like there's another one that has a bandwidth differently and then another one that has a different bandwidth. Most of those bandwidths will overlap each other. So all tensor rings are creating a tensor field, which is fantastic for water, electromagnetics, things like that. But then really where the true magic is within the rings is within each one of these is that higher dimensional tool that my sister and I create and that I've created through lifetimes of these higher dimensional tools that anchor into the tensor fields. So the golden fire, we name the golden fire ring because it is the sacred heart, not the sacred space, the heart, the sacred heart, the trifold gold flame that you always see Jesus and Mary depicted with, but beyond religion, this is something that is innate to the human. So that is the frequency that comes through the golden fire rings. That is a larger band with the frequency. The um, 333 megahertz, the earth resonance ring, will not hold the golden fire frequency um, because it is within a different bandwidth, you see. So that's, that's why we have so many different cubit measures of rings is because they all have certain bandwidths of frequency that they work within. It's not like any one of them is better than the other. They all have their own unique properties and purposes, which again, they also um, can transfer between each other a lot of the different frequencies and properties. Um, but they all, there isn't one that contains everything. Um, all right, so we will start here with questions. Hey, thank you guys again for being here. Thank you for the questions. Um, again, please do, if I don't answer your question um, fully and coherently, please let me know and and we will um, expound on that. Uh, let's see, make sure I'm starting. Yep, I'll start with the oldest question first here. Um, could you talk a little bit about the sound relationship with tensor rings, especially Tibetan singing bowls? Yes, so we have, a singing bowl right back here, um, a crystal bowl that, uh, and my, my sister Brenda, she uses crystal bowls too, um, you know, when she does stuff in person, really phenomenal. So what we discovered is at a, I was at a holistic fair and um, somebody comes along when we had just found the 333 megahertz ring and um, somebody was like, wow, I can see the color of sound. And I can see that that ring changes the color of sound. And at the time, I was like, wait, the color of sound? Yes. So uh, people who have different perceptual ranges within different fields of energy that can see these different planes and layers, just like we, just like I can see like ghosts, waywards, I can see all these different planes and levels, but I can't see the color of sound. But there are many who do. So with the 333 megahertz ring, it was changing like a, the, the crystal bowl that I had, um, a heart chakra bowl. It comes out as this pink color. Um, you put a 333 megahertz ring around it and it changes it to purple. So for a while with the 333 megahertz rings um, that, that were kind of the leading edge at that time, we were making these soul rings for um, singing bowls. We'd make a set of three rings that were interwoven and they would sit underneath of a singing bowl and they would change the whole quality and flavor of that singing bowl. So people who were using it for healing or people who just were sensitive and could feel, and even those who really never felt before, could tell a quality shift in the sound of the singing bowl when we were using those 333 megahertz rings with them. Um, so it changes the quality of the sound wave. Now, there are others who um, actually one of our good friends, Mariana, who um, she first time she played with our tensor rings, she got a 333 megahertz ring that she wore as a pendant because uh, she's a singer. She would project her voice. Um, so basically the tensor rings, because they create this column of energy that comes out of them, there that acts as a carrier wave so just like a visible light spectrum we used to make these um these little well we didn't make the flashlights but we made 
we took the flashlight component and LED red light of a very certain frequency, I think it was like 660, and we put that with a ring and it would act as a carrier wave to carry that red LED light and the information on it for miles. Um, people were actually using that for bone, care, bone marrow treatments with LEDs because the tensor ring would actually create that carrier wave for that light to actually be able to penetrate into bone. Because again, tensor fields, nothing stops them. They go through all physical matter. So with the, um, with the, the, the voice, the sound, it is kind of the same concept in that when you are voicing through here, you put this around a speaker or your singing bowl, that it acts as a carrier wave. It brings coherency to the wave that comes out, whether it is sound, light, frequency, inaudible or audible or visual frequencies. Brings coherency to them. Um, so with singing bowls, it is pretty phenomenal. Now we move from the 333 then the harmony ring was able to then carry that. Now the golden fire. So you can use any of the, basically any of the rings that we have are going to amplify and act as carrier waves um, for sound. Um, question, how do you use your wings to talk? I feel a strong pull to have it in my hand and carry it around. So this is why I'm wearing it as a pendant. Fantastic, um, you know, wearing the wings of talk as a pendant. So basically with all the tools, we were always told not to give instructions with them because we did not want to put them in a box or limit the ways that they're used because all of the tools are very intuitive. They, they connect us with our higher self, with that intuition, and we are then subtly guided on how to use those tools. So there is really no right or wrong way to use any of these tools and you can never do harm with any of them either. Um, that's the beautiful thing about tensor fields. You cannot do harm with any of these fields and frequencies. Um, so with the wings of talk, yeah, I used to carry mine in my pocket all the time too, Ethan. I mean, that's that's just what I did with my wings of talk. Then I also put that in my daughter's backpack when she was going to school. Um, so there's a lot of ways that you can use the wings of talk in a passive sense. But to get into more of the active ways to use the wings of talk for creating these columns of light, for doing distance work, um, please do see that wings of talk webinar. Um, and, and again, experiment with it. Um, because if you, if you start to work with these tools, you will notice shifts in the work that you're doing. So when we do the energy work, we don't necessarily have to see and see the things that are going on and see that we're doing clearing and things like that. When we're in the heart space and we're working with those tools, you can feel a shift occur with what you have your attention onto. Um, so just watch your attention for those shifts that you feel within your being. I have the Golden Fire Activator 3.0 and placed a gateway pendant that I don't wear anymore. Does that help bring through the energy benefits of the new Activator 3.1? Yes, so the Activator 3.1 is simply the Harmonic Creation Field Trio added into the regular Activator, which yes, that is the Harmonic Creation Field Trio. So if you have the, the original Golden Fire Activator, well, not the original, but if you have the previous Golden Fire Activator and you add in that Harmonic Creation Field Trio, yes, it's going to be exactly the same as this Activator 3.1. Phenomenal tool. Love this thing. Um, As a matter of fact, I just got it. I just swapped out my car, so now I need to get a new activator on my hood because that's my hood ornament is an activator. Um, because I travel enough that it just clears the roads. Which you can have a golden fire generator in your car, and that's what I suggest for people who do a lot of traveling or who drive commute to work through the cities is golden fire activators, which we still have a sale on right now. Would the silver infinite light pendant do anything different than pairing a silver infinite heart with a silver blue light pendant? Okay, so the, the silver infinite light pendant, this one here, 
what makes this one so magical is this outside ring in silver and it's the regeneration ring which is that um that silver blue light ring which you can get that this ring on its own so if you want to recreate the energies of this you can actually get that silver ring on its own and you can put a copper or the silver golden fire infinity in it doesn't matter whether you're using copper or silver in this case and they don't have to be welded together um, so i mean we do make the regenerative heart pendant which is the same thing in copper but because this outer ring is made in silver that regeneration ring that is the one that is connecting so much higher to that blue light it's it's a phenomenal ring on its own but i still suggest adding that golden fire infinity that's really what makes it um that's what makes it that heart connecting pendant so hopefully that answered your question there marla um then let's see what sources do you personally use for drinking water and what tools do you do you utilize on them for example do you use tap water with particular rings around the faucet reverse osmosis um, so what what we do for drinking water for our home for my home and also for the studio is we use berkey water filters i love the berkey filters um they don't filter out like a reverse osmosis they don't filter out all of the mineral content but yet they take out all the bacteriological they'll take out um, their filters will take out arsenic fluoride you know chlorine obviously um, so the berkey water filters are fantastic I, I highly recommend them because basically they're a canister on top of a canister if you pour water in the top we use just our tap water here um, you know we're we're pretty lucky because we live in a town of 124 people we don't put fluoride in the water because we're not legally uh, mandated to do so um so we just take our tap water and we dump into the berkey into the top canister and then we have a silver water ring in the top and then down below we have the larger harmonic creation field trio sits right underneath of the berkey perfectly so that berkey just sits on these um that's what we use for our water. So, you know, having a ring on your incoming line is only going to clear the water energetically, clear the memory of it, which is still a huge deal, but it's not going to bring the physical restructuring to the water unless water sits within that tensor field for four to six hours. So the Berkey is really the perfect place to charge your water. Um, I would love to become a distributor and promote them, but I like to promote them anyway because they're, it's a fantastic water system, I believe. Uh, we've been using them for several years. Um, the, the filters are inexpensive. You can buy, you know, off-brand filters even on Amazon um, for about half the price, and they're just as good. They'll use a charcoal filter plus another. Um, anyway, I highly recommend you checking them out. Can you describe ways to work with the Golden Fire and Golden Light Wand? Ah, do I have a wand here? Oh my goodness. I don't have a wand here. So, we'll call this a golden fire and light wand. Basically, with the wand, I know it does come with that little booklet, you know, and it's it's very, it's it it's a thin booklet, so it doesn't go too much into it. It talks about running energy by simply for me for running energy it is simply making a movement in a circle or a figure eight doesn't matter which direction i always do it clockwise clockwise as you are the vortex and you are spinning it out i spin it clockwise because that is sending energy out when you traditionally um but you can do it counterclockwise it is okay it's still sending the energy out it's all based on that soft intention that you are sending energy. So with the golden fire and light wand, you can send energy that way. And in the booklet, we talk about doing it on the palm because then that opens up that meridian that goes to the heart that will activate the sacred heart. Um, and then plus it opens up that meridian so you can run energy through your hand. It's like a, it's like a Reiki activation, basically, which you're just channeling in that higher light. Um, and I'm a Reiki master too, so I mean, I don't downplay Reiki, but um, 
basically it's just opening up that channel to the heart through your palm. Now that's one way you can use the golden fire and light wand. Um, to me, the most powerful way to use that wand is, is creating the, the columns of light because then once you're activated that sacred heart, the golden fire, then you can create the columns of light that are part of the golden fire and light wand. The golden light wand aspect is connected to that higher dimensional tool, that ancient etheric tool that's probably older than this universe, clears timelines, realities for the person, moves geopathic and geomagnetic lines. And then when we bring in the golden fire aspect of it, that is what is doing a lot of that higher clearing, such as crossing over ghost waywards. So you drop these columns of light in the cemeteries as well by using the wand. So basically we have um, even the older video of the golden light wand before it became the golden fire and light wand will still be a beneficial one to watch because then you can still use that aspect of the golden light wand. But then there's also a video on the golden fire and light wand um, on the product page. And there's also light anchoring 3.0. So all of those will walk you through more in depth on not only using columns of light, but also the meditations that you can do for yourself and invite others in going soul to soul to hold the space for them to do the same work that you do with it. Um, so yeah, please do check out all those videos on the wands because um, they, they'll go pretty in depth with everything. Question, can we combine different tools with the wings of talk? I put the wings of talk on a table and I put the harmony generator on top of on top of it and inside the harmony generator generator a crystal. The energy was intense. I was able to feel it all around the house. Certainly um, any of the energy tools that we create, especially those that create those larger fields like the generators, like the wings of talk that are more working for a larger area of influence. When we add any other energy tools, especially crystals, um, it, it amplifies that out. Kind of like how we were talking at the beginning of this program about how the tensor rings can amplify sound, light. They also amplify a crystal. So if we take a little crystal, a little amethyst here, and we put that inside of this ring, this ring can then project, this ring as a carrier wave can then carry the frequencies and properties of this crystal along that carrier wave. You put it inside of the harmony generator and there you go, the harmony generator, things fall in here, the harmony generator is then broadcasting out the energy and information of this crystal. So Yes, the, the tools work very well with other energy tools, including like radionics, um, frequencies, crystals. Um, yeah, please do experiment, especially with your crystals. And it cleans and clears the crystals too. Uh, which tools do you recommend I place in short-term rental property? So, you know, I would almost suggest doing the wings of talk in a short-term rental property. Um, just because the wings of talk are one that if you don't get into doing the energy work, you know, anchoring columns of light, things like that, the wings of talk is still gonna do a fantastic job as a sit it and forget it tool. You just put the wings of talk in there and it will, it will work with the geopathic and geomagnetic lines as well as any um, you know, geopathic stress, as well as any underground aquifers, um, portal vortexes. So it's going to be doing all of your huge environmental energy restructuring as well as, so that's going to be there left permanently, that work that it does, you know, if you just set it and forget it there. Um, and then it's also going to be clearing everything else in the meantime, all your electromagnetics of all flavors and varieties, dense consciousness, ghost waywards, all the stuff. But if you do feel like doing the energy work with it, then the wings of talk, setting it there, um, creating that column of light with it and anchoring in that energetics. So that way, when you take the physical tool from there and you leave, you're gonna leave that entire energetic structure there permanently. Um, so that's the beautiful thing about the wings of talk is, is that you can just set it, it'll do its job. 
or you can actively use it and anchor it in so that it stays in that spot so you can then remove the physical tool. Um, let's see, if we set the wings to talk in home, does it matter to put it vertically or horizontally? Nope, not at all. Um, the wings to talk is creating more of a field and that column of light, however you set it, is absolutely fine. You can hang it on the wall or however you wish. Um, and then a question from Lisa. Hi, I was guided to place a tensor ring on top of a crystal dome on top of an essence altar. A protection and connection essence on the altar seems super potent even though on top, not under. Yeah, and again, the, the placement of the tensor rings with, with water, with crystals, um, with whatever, it doesn't matter exactly, you know, where you put the tensor ring underneath on top on the side um, and that's you know because the the ring itself is going to be creating that column of light which goes for miles so in reality you can have a crystal way down here and the ring way up here and that's still going to be working through that field so um, yeah don't be too concerned about the placement of crystals and other objects with the rings or even where you place the rings um, or generators. And again, of course, the generators are creating the sunshine. So especially the generators in Wings of Talk, it doesn't matter where you place them within the home. And again, the rings are creating a column of light. So they're a little bit more particular where you place them as long as whatever you are working with is within that column. If I just wanted to hang that one there on the camera. Um, let's see, what are the other things that we can do with Wi-Fi rings? They interact with crystals too. Yes, the Wi-Fi ring is a super versatile ring. This is the golden fire ring. This golden fire Wi-Fi ring is just as powerful as this golden fire ring as this golden fire ring. They're all fractals of the same golden fire cubit measure, all fractals of it. They're all producing the same exact golden fire field. So the golden fire is really the one to use with water, with crystals, um, with Wi-Fi, with personal, with the heart, with healing, with connecting, activating everything. Golden fire, the Wi-Fi ring, super versatile. And it's our most economical ring. Um, yeah, these guys are fantastic. Light bulbs, too. That's a great place to put these guys is on light bulbs. Um, can more than one intention be programmed into the Harmony generator at the same time? Or is it best programmed with one intention at a time? So the Harmony generators, which do hold and amplify your intentions that you place into them, you can place as many intentions into these generators as you wish. And they will hold those intentions, amplify, and broadcast them. And again... You don't have to worry about the intentions that you put in here because it is always only broadcasting out and holding what is in the highest and best good within those harmony generators. So, um, you know, you, you can, it used to be when uh, the Elders 3 first channeled the information about the, the tensor field generators when we had the sacred qubit, um, you know, they'd always say, once a year, go through and clear the programs and reset them, and which is kind of more for yourself. So that way, once a year, you go through, and even faster now, because, I mean, we're moving fast. I'd even say once a month, sit down with your generator and reset your intentions in there. Um, just because, you know, we are moving really fast. And um, anyway, so the Harmony Generator is great for holding, broadcasting, amplifying intentions. The golden fire, not so much because the golden fire is working more with our higher soul self. Again, it's where the bandwidths are. The harmony generators are here, this bandwidth. The golden fire bandwidth is here. They have some overlapping. So yes, these are going to work with the higher soul self that the harmony does. But the golden fire, we they don't hold and amplify those human-based intentions as the harmony generators do. So the golden fire are ones that are just going to be broadcasting, holding the intentions of our higher soul self, 
where the harmony generators are ones that we suggest to people who are doing work like with um, agriculture and such who are trying to you know move a specific type of beetle out of a field or out of a garden things like that that these can hold more of our our mind human-based intentions um, let's see and the question what are you wearing on the shorter cord around your neck <laughs> yeah this guy so we only made a couple of these guys it's actually a miniature regeneration gaia sphere in silver um and so yeah they're they're a tough one to make in this size and we don't we're probably not going to mass produce these guys but i do love this thing um so let's see. Yeah, and then again, it's the Gaia sphere is, is what this geometry is. I'll see a question. We have a smart meter as well as solar panels. Aside from placing the golden fire disc on the smart meter box, do I need to attach a separate golden fire disc to the solar box beside the smart meter? No, with the, the golden fire discs, these guys, you can put them anywhere in the electrical system and they will follow it back to the transformer. So I imagine that there is some kind of, and I don't know enough about solar, but I am assuming that there is some kind of a transformer box that goes from the panels and then changes that into your household electric, um, into your 120, if you use 120, or even if you're using, still using 12 volt. Um, so, this um so if you put this onto the smart meter it will follow or if you put this onto your fuse panel sorry if you put this onto your fuse panel it will follow that electrical current back to your your smart meter and it where your meters themselves create a field that's about 11 to 12 feet across so if if this is following this back and this is transforming this field bringing coherency to that electromagnetic field that's coming off of your meter 12 feet across then all the transmissions from the smart meter within that big field are being transformed as well so all transmissions from that smart meter then are transformed within that larger 11 to 12 foot uh, bubble of electromagnetic energy that has been transformed itself um, so then then the other part of the question is do i need to attach the golden fire disc to the solar box that's no i don't think so because basically when you put one of these on your fuse panel or plug it in anywhere within your home this is going to follow this back to the transformer which is why i was talking about the transformer for your electric because once it hits the transformer um you know like on your utility pole or the big boxes that sit outside on the lawn somewhere in your local neighborhood those are the transformers so this guy that you plug into your household electric is going to follow that circuitry all the way back to that transformer and then that transformer all of it that it connects there but it doesn't follow it back up line anymore um, so the answer to that question is you should be fine with just one of these on your electrical panel or plugged in and that should take care of all the way back to um, your solar panels so a lot of these tools have the golden fire or regeneration is it necessary to have both one for clearing and the other one bring you to a higher state after at the same time which is the best way so the difference with the golden fire and the regeneration um <clears throat> the golden fire is still a really a high connecting one the golden fire is one that contains all those different frequencies and properties of the harmony and everything beforehand <clears throat> excuse me the golden fire is the one that is the heavy duty clearing i mean it, it does the clearing work it also does the activating the activating of the sacred heart the golden fire is also higher connecting because that sacred heart field is a higher field. So yes, the golden fire is absolutely perfect for that higher connection, for the clearing work, um, 
for the activation work. But then the regeneration ring does not contain all of this stuff. The regeneration ring is alone a very even higher connecting. So basically all of our older tools like the ones that Slim made in his time, the 144 megahertz and, and such, those were still built within a certain cap that you couldn't go higher. The Golden Fire was created after that. So the Golden Fire is reaching up into these higher echelons. The regeneration though is just taking us super high. Um, you know, like the story with regeneration rings, we did not release these for six months because they almost killed us, literally, because until we tweaked them. We had to do a lot of work with these to where then the soul would come in and bring through everything with a lot more grace and ease. Because if you just take something that's at a certain vibrational level and you just skyrocket it way up here, you, there's going to be some issues within the human taking that huge of a jump. So now then the regeneration ring is allowing us to be, to, to go in a more comfortable pace. But when we add the golden fire to the regeneration, it picks up the pace because the reason that we can't just jump from here to here is because of everything that we carry in layered. So the golden fire is helping to bust through all those layers. It is doing that clearing work. So that's why we use them together is because the golden fire can take you up and it'll take you up to a spot. This guy here can take you up and it'll take you to a higher spot. But the two of them together will just do it faster. That's why we use those two together, the regeneration and the golden fire. Faster, easier. Um, but you can use one or the other and they still get you there. Um, <laughs> meditation. Yes, we'll probably do a meditation at the end of this, uh, at the end of the hour here. Um, what would you recommend for people to use who receive a lot of energy rushing into or through their bodies at night? Is there something that can help integrate and allow for sleep? The Tauruses are fantastic, whether it's the Cosmic Sun Disc or the Golden Fire Taurus. Those are the ones that most of us curl up with in bed at night. Um, the Tauruses are fantastic. Another one that is good for, for, the, for the nighttime is the, the uh, Regeneration Gaia Sphere. <coughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to kind of take a look there to Susanna, what would be, you know, the best. So what pops up first and for you particularly with that is, um, you know, the, the Tauruses. The Tauruses are fantastic for nighttime. Um, the Regeneration Gaia Sphere is more, I guess, along the lines for people who astral out and have that hard time coming back. Um, these guys will help, help you come back easier and quicker. Um, <laughs> And then the, the other thing that comes up would just be the larger rings, um, you know, the, the practitioner sets that any of those that you would hang right above your bed so that you are sleeping within that column of light. And this is you in the bed. This is the ring that you hang above the bed, the larger ones, and you can sleep within that column. And that in itself is for it making that cocoon, so to speak, you know, ar around you. Um, And, you know, I've been sleeping with my dragon wand for the past few nights. I haven't picked up my dragon wand in a long time. And um, just for about the past week, that one's really been calling to, uh, to hold on to at night. So, yeah, Susanna, um, that's what I would suggest is either one of the Tauruses. Um, you know, besides using the mini pyramid, the mini pyramid comes with the cosmic sun disk. And really the mini pyramids for, you know, most of us that have the mini pyramids have them in our bedrooms. Um, the mini pyramids are something else for the nighttime stuff. Um, but 
you know, again, that's that's a spendy little thing. But then again, if you're going to buy a Taurus, the pure that's halfway to the pyramid. Um, the Golden Fire and Light Wand is also one that I hear a lot of people have reported. The mini gold, that little Golden Fire and Light Wand, that little forty-four dollar brass wand, um, is one that a lot of people swear by too for for nighttime for sleeping with having it under their pillow. Um, so that that might be another more economical thought as well. Um, Samson, hey buddy, with regeneration rings, is there a different effect or feel the resonance with the plant, animal, etheric, crystal kingdoms energetically versus the golden fire? Also with the mini silver 222 generator. Okay, so the for the regeneration rings and and how it is working with more of the the natural environment, um, we see that when we're using a regeneration ring with a crystal or with water, with any of that crystalline structure that has the consciousness associated with it, that it is taking it higher. It is connecting it to a higher aspect of itself. Um, so the regeneration rings with crystals, plants, animals, people, water, it is bringing in that higher connection. Like with water, it's bringing in that higher connection before it came to the planet. I mean, that higher connection, not its most pristine aspect of this being on this planet, we're talking about the higher connections. That's the same with the crystal kingdom. None of this stuff was really from earth. You know, no consciousness is. It started out as earth, then earth had consciousness, then other consciousness came in to support it, like water, like crystal, like human, everything, plants, animals, fields of consciousness. Um, so it is connecting to that higher aspect. Now the golden fire, the golden fire is still, again, it is connecting things to its higher aspect, but I would say to its higher earth plane aspect, to its highest potential that it has here on the planet is how I would see that, where the regeneration ring is taking it even further. Um, then uh, Samson's also asking about the 222. Um, the 222 rings that are made with that 888 series, um, those guys are more, the, the 888 series is another one like the regeneration that we don't put a bunch of other stuff into. The 222 rings are basically clean and clear. They are grounding, they are connecting. Um, so, I mean, that's still a really fantastic um, frequency the the 222s um you know because we still make the the 222 generators as well um but they're just grounding connecting us basically so with the mini generator is there a larger field effect than the golden fire generators with the mini generator oh so samson's asking about the 222 generators versus the golden fire no the 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 222 generators only have like about the size of a home maybe a little bit larger maybe a city block is what it feels like um innately is is about how big the 222 generators have versus the half mile or the one mile out with the golden fire uh, let's see. So Jill's asking, since using the tensor tools and crystals have many clock sinks, uh, such as seeing the 4, 444 and 222 and all that. Um, so that's, this happens more when buying new tools, tensors on lines with eyes closed for 20 minutes, a glowing blue swirling light and inner vision. What are your thoughts about synchronicities and inner light? So yeah, you know, seeing synchronicities, seeing 1111 on the clock, all those in, in, in other places and in license plates and and just numbers in general, it is it is totally just a way that the universe is talking to us, that you know, that our soul is talking to us. It is just recognizing synchronicity. So the more that we can recognize synchronicities as they occur, the more they will occur and the greater they are. 
So it's, it's just recognizing those synchronicities and you don't necessarily have to put a lot of mental meaning to them other than just, hey, there's a synchronicity. I looked up right at 2.22 p.m. And, um, you know, and just it's just a reminder and a knowing that you are in that alignment. Um, and it doesn't have to be anything more than that. Or you can look up the numbers too, you know, like they got all the number books out there. Um, and then as far as um, the inner light that you see. So if, if you close your eyes and you start to see those different lights, that's, that's a great exercise. That's the way that I know a lot of people who, when they try to work on their third eye sight, is they'll just close their eyes and they'll wait for those visual lights to come through. Um, you know, like I say, everybody is different on their receptor of the different frequencies of the different bandwidths that they can see in. Um, some people can see visual things. Like I say, some people can see the color of sound, ghosts, waywards, angels, beings. Some people can see lights. It is just, it, it's just different. So just keep, keep working with it. And setting your intentions too with the whole thing you know setting the intentions with your soul i could not see for the first few years that i was doing this work and one of my path partners she was able to see everything and and i never could and so every night when i went to bed i set the intention source soul creator god i want all the downloads and activations so that i can start to see I did that for a few years now i can see a lot of things you know it's just it's just the exercising of it all um malit hey if you had to pick which would be your top three tools man my top three tools are for myself the mini pyramid the mini taurus pendant what else do I wear? I always have the shaman wand. Those are my top three tools. Um, the top three tools that I recommend to people, just because I always have all this stuff around, golden fire generator of any size and frequency is the number one thing that I recommend to people. Number two, infinite light pendant. Those are the top two things that I recommend to people. The top three things, the third thing would vary between person, but usually a wand, usually the golden fire and light wand because the golden fire and light wands are very self empowering. And that's really what we wanna be doing with these tools is empowering people, letting them know that they can do the work. And then after a while, you don't need the tools. You can just do the work. You can hold the spaces yourself. Um, do you think to add the regeneration frequency to golden fire and the light wand like the wings of talk? Do you think to... so? The golden fire and light wand, if you add in, um, like the regeneration ring, if you add a regeneration ring, now let me make sure that I'm reading this right to add the regeneration frequency to the golden fire and light wand. So if you add the regeneration ring to the golden fire and light wand, it's still not going to be the wings of talk. The wings of talk is also um, what creates that tool are the specific geometries as well as those frequencies. Um, because the wings of talk, there's the, the four, well, there's eight times that go into it. Four of those are golden fire. Four of those are the balance and harmony, and that's bringing in the golden fire and the golden light. So there's those two, and then the regeneration ring on the outside. Um, so it, it has to do with the way the energy flows to the center of that. Um, so it's part of the geometry. So you really can't create the wings of talk with a regeneration ring and a wand, but yet if you watch the wings of talk webinar, you can recreate the wings of talk energetically without having to have any physical tools. And that's, that's another beautiful thing about the wands or about the golden fire and light wand and the wings of talk 
is that you don't need to have the physical tool. You don't need to spend the money to buy them. If you watch the, the videos, we do the attunements together to where you are attuned and you know it energetically and you can recreate it there. Because when we recreate these things energetically, they're just as powerful as the physical tool, um, you know, with when we're using the columns of light um, that come from the wand and the wings of talk. So the wand and the wings of talk, you don't need the physical tools to recreate those particular fields. Uh, question, should you put the generator in the center of the home? Does it work the same as if in the corner of a room? Yes, you can put the generators anywhere. They will go through the walls. So I suggest to a lot of people to even put your generator inside of your car. And then most people are never far from their car. That way you are commuting with that thing um, wherever you go. Um, let's see. Here's a question from Christopher. All right. Is the dragon wand the regeneration template field with the with the okay so christopher is asking about the dragon wand um so first of all to address the first part of that christopher so yes the dragon wand and shoot i don't have one sitting here so the dragon wand the main part of the wand is the regeneration ring and then the infinity is the golden fire and that's the same with our um with these little guys the shaman's wand is that the main portion of the shaman's wand as well is the regeneration with the golden fire infinity so the regeneration um the wand part itself with the dragon wands as christopher is asking um that is the one that is holding the space with the dragons when i twist up that wire for that regeneration ring for the for the dragon wands or even the fairy wands um those it, I see that field coming in. It is, it is opening up that space to where you interact with those dragons. And that space is held there within that field. So the dragon wand and the shaman's wand are exactly the same in the ways that you work with them and the fields that you can create with them. The only difference is the dragon wand will also open up that field to work with the dragons. Um, and then a question, the, the other part of that question, if you add both harmony and golden fire to a shaman, fairy, or dragon wand, would it create a harmonic creation field wand? Um, and the answer is yes. You can add in the, the harmony ring um, with this, and that will create that harmonic creation field trio as well. And I bloss. Uh, can I place my talisman or amulet inside the fire generator? And can I place more than one item in it? Yes, totally. The golden fire generators will work with, with all forms of energy tools. Um, so you can place that inside of your generator, your, your talismans, your, your other energy tools, um, and it will still be broadcasting and holding that same space. Um, and then question from Christopher, what's the difference between the eight and a half cosmic cosmic sun disc and the three inch other than the size of the field? What is it that makes you prefer the eight inch? So the cosmic sun disc in both of their sizes, the three inch and the eight inch, um, the field is the same, kind of how we talk about the... Um, Wi-Fi ring is the golden fire, and it has the same field as this heavy-duty golden fire ring. So they, they have the same energetic field, the same tensor field, and the same energy and information within them. It's just that the thicker gauges, to me, are felt more on the physical so the reason that I like, and actually this is the regeneration ring. Um, so I'll use these two in comparison. These are the same frequency. But uh, if you can feel that, man, this thing is a lot stronger on the physical. Subtle energy, energetically, they're exactly the same. Um, but the reason that I like the, the larger 8-inch eight eight cosmic sun disk is because I can feel that in my physical cells. 
I especially like even the larger ones. Here's one of our prototype of the Cosmic Sun Discs. That's even more phenomenal. Then you get to the 26 inch Cosmic Sun Disc that is made with like a thick two gauge wire and four gauge wire. Those ones to me, I feel and see them working on the physical structures of homes because it's just that much more potent for the physical. Um, but again, everything is energy first and foremost. So no matter what, this little guy is still going to affect the entire field the same as is that heavy one. It's just for the physical, we feel it a lot more. And for it being more tangible, that is why I like the, the heavier gauge and like the larger sun disk is because to me it is more physically tangible and not just energetically tangible. As you create the frequencies of the metals, do you allow the natural level of their frequencies or is it amplified? Um, so the question about the metals that we use, um, and I'm not sure really how to answer that question because so within the, within all of the tensor rings that we create, we are working with the consciousness of that metal, whether it is the consciousness of silver or whether it is the consciousness of copper or brass, you know, all, all the flavors that go into the brass. Um, we're working with the consciousness of those. So we like the copper wire, every copper wire that comes into this building that oh, I twist that those are cleaned and cleared all energetically all the way back to before they came out of the ground. Um, so that in itself is a huge thing working with the silver. Silver never used to hold a tensor field. It wasn't until we started working with the consciousness of silver and then making the silver rings out of the first um, 144 megahertz rings. It wasn't until we worked with the consciousness of silver that the silver would even hold a tensor field. Um, so, so yeah, it, it's all about um, the consciousness working with the metals and not necessarily frequencies because all the frequencies that come through a tensor ring, through a tensor field, are all created in the etheric templates. That's where all the frequencies come from, is through the field of the ring and not necessarily at all through the copper itself or through the physical structure. The physical metal structure is what's creating the field where you find all the frequencies. Um, Christopher is asking, have you felt to make a regeneration coil? Yes, actually, we are working on some new projects right now um, where we're going to be using little 60 degree pyramids and we're going to be creating um, quantum gridding structures that are going to be using the regeneration coil. But the regeneration coil by itself, no, it's not. When we've made them, they're not really by themselves as a, as a coil to replace the golden fire, not really. This little guy is a regeneration coil, but he's not that much more than what the golden fire coil is because um, it's just basically moving the energy when you put it into a coil form. Um, Jill's asking, is your earth resonance water rings the three, 333 megahertz? The same qubit as the earth resonance with, with earth resonance? Oh, yeah. So Jill's asking about the dancing with water rings. Yes, actually, we make the, the rings for dancing with water. Um, yeah, these are, we make all the dancing with water rings. The 333 megahertz is, is that one that we discovered years ago and the earth resonance ring is simply the etheric template that we co-created to put into the 333 megahertz ring. So it, it's called the earth resonance ring, uh, because of the etheric template that's put into there. But the base of it is the 333 megahertz ring. Um, Lisa asks, which tool do you recommend for placement in a medicine wheel or labyrinth with the intention of opening a portal to divine energy? This guy. When we made our, every time we've upgraded these, um, we take them to a local medicine wheel here in town. Um, we call it the 13th Lakota Sacred Site. And these guys are creating the sacred space, the activators. 
And the space that they are creating, it is opening up that connection down to those crystal cities within the earth as well as to those light beings that are right outside of the planet and it is holding a safe sacred space to where they all come up on this level and layer and play this is uh for medicine wheels for sacred space creation you can use the wings to talk um the wings to talk might be okay too but to me that that activator is the one to use for medicine wheels um and john asks and then we'll we'll get through the questions that we have here because it's 10 30 or it's been an hour already i'll we'll get through these questions here and then we will do a quick meditation um and john hey there is it is there a possibility that the shaman's wand will ever come in silver version Oh my goodness, that is something that we have so many people asking that. Shaman's wand in silver. I want to do a shaman's wand in silver. But this would be a spandy little wand in this 10 gauge and a 12 gauge infinity um, spendy wand. Silver, when you start making silver out of the 10 gauge um, and even the 12 gauge, that becomes quite quite the pricey one you know these guys right here are like 250 bucks um for these solid silver pieces and so i imagine the shaman's wand is going to be comparable if not more i would really love to make a shaman's wand in silver um it's been on the back burner to create a wand that one wand that does them all out of uh brass tube and a silver for the regeneration and a golden fire for the dragon so one of these days we just might make one of them and they would be a smaller pendant so that's on the back burner um does the 333 megahertz create synesthesia oh man jill i'd have to look up that word <laughs> synesthesia I, I know more, I've forgotten more words than, than, than are in the dictionary, I think. So I don't even know that to answer. Um, if I attach a big magnet to a starburst, the, the, the bigger starburst, and fix it to the panel, will it affect the energy of the starburst? Um, so using the, the starburst or any of the tools, using magnets with them it does do some kind of amplification with them um to me using that starburst on the electrical panel with a magnet something feels just a little off with that um whew, yeah i'd say if you do that i i would add a golden fire ring just to smooth everything out um because they're, they're just something that just doesn't feel quite right with that. Um, and then plus the starbursts, they're not going to, the, the starbursts are only going to work um, within that, that immediate field with them restructuring. They're, they don't have the consciousness of electricity anchored into those starbursts, the original bigger starbursts. So, th so is the consciousness of electricity that is in the golden fire rings that is um that is what is really working with the electrical bye daughter love you. love you my daughter is in here hanging out she's taking off now um synesthesia of like tasting colors making mixing senses oh i don't have i really don't know jill if a medium were to wear a golden fire light wand, would the spirits be there to talk? And that's from Jill too. So Jill, I really don't know and I really can't see at the moment right now um, about answering the, um, the question about synesthesia. Um, but to answer quickly your question about if a medium were to wear the golden fire and light wand, would the spirits be there to talk? So what we see, um, 
depends on who a medium is connecting to. If a medium is connecting to a ghost, a wayward, that part of the human consciousness that has left the body and is still wandering around and hasn't gone to source to check in. If a, if a medium is talking to that aspect, that aspect, when it comes into the field of the golden fire, it is going to be taken back to its soul. It'll cross over. So a ghost wayward, no, you wouldn't want to try to use a golden fire generator or wand or anything um, to try to talk with ghosts. But what we call a spirit is we call a spirit as somebody who is gone back and checked in the source, checked in with their soul. And so a spirit we see is, is something that is connected to source and, and has that personification of, of the person there. But that personification of the, of the dead person who's still a ghost wayward, um, nope, it will get crossed over. Um, and then I'm just checking the chat right now real quick because um, we're going to have to be done with questions for today. Um, and just seeing everybody that's saying hello. Um, yeah, thank you guys again all for, for being here and, and your support. Um, and again, I'm just reading through the chat real quick just to see if there was any questions on chat that I missed. And thank you guys. I appreciate that uh, you everybody put their questions over into the question box instead of chat so that um, I didn't miss anything. Um, Alex, uh, Alex is asking about the coil and the silver. Um, I doubt if we're going to make coils and silver, we might, they, we've experimented with them and they, they're, they're kind of a tough one to, to make to where we feel comfortable sending them out into the world. We may, if we do, they're going to be these tiny little guys here. Um, and then also Alex is asking about the next Twisted Sage project. And that is basically working with the pyramids more. Like I say, we're going to be making little quantum gridding pyramids. We're having 3D printed up right now as we speak. Um, uh, small pyramids that we can finally make molds from uh, so that we can basically create, um, I don't even have a drawing of it, but we're gonna be creating these quantum gridding tools. And then plus the giant pyramids uh, that we're, we're gonna make the one for disclosurefest.com. Um, as long as Disclosure Fest is still a go for Summer Equinox in LA, that 30,000 person mass meditation and Dea Dova is going to be there too. And we're going to do some gridding. Um, so well, we're going to, we're planning on making a 33 foot tall pyramid to take there. Um, so basically it's a lot with the pyramids that we're doing right now. And actually, we just got done with our, we put 600 tons of gravel down. We're getting ready to make a pyramid building. Um, that's going to be exciting. The space for workshops and um, the studio that we have here is just, we're leasing it. And and now that, you know, I have some land, we're going to uh, eventually, slowly, we're trying to build um, a new space for this studio, which is the cutting, grinding, twisting studio and where all the ascension chambers are. And then our actual manufacturing studio is, is across the street here. Um, so we need a place to house all this so that we don't have to be leasing. Um, but here within the next few years, that's another project is our giant pyramid building. And then you guys can come visit and do workshops here. Um, so, Anyway, awesome. Thank you guys. I, again, I appreciate everybody being here. Um, and we'll, if, if we missed any questions here along the way, we'll please do check in next time or send an email. Um, I'm always happy to, to help answer questions through email. Um, and we'll more than likely we'll have more of these 50 question Fridays. Okay. So let's do a meditation. Um, and I was thinking last night on what we were going to do for 
meditation, anything new and spectacular, but um, we're just going to start holding the space and just see where we go from there. Um, because really using this space of the going into the sacred space of the heart and um, using this space of the, um, the quantum harmony of the harmony of the universal peace and most of all of the um, neutrality, the field of neutrality is huge. Um, the work that we've been doing over the past few weeks with that field of neutrality has to do with um, basically bringing through happiness for no reason. It also has to do with bringing in your power more. Um, the field of neutrality is is really a super powerful thing in creation right now and it just opens us up to a lot more um so anyway we'll just do the meditation we'll do the field of neutrality and again and i'm glad that we have some new folks on here today um this is a space that we created that holds that field of neutrality. You can also find it in our mini ascension pyramids or the bigger ascension pyramids. So what we'll do today is we'll go into the sacred space of the heart and then you can just imagine yourself being within this space. And as you do, it just, it, um, it just helps to hold that space, that neutrality field. All right. Here we go. So just close your eyes if you wish. Put your attention onto your physical heart. Within your physical heart is your light, your soul's fire. Connect your light with that of the earth. So we're just connecting our light within our heart, our soul's light, with that of the heart of the Mother Earth. And we breathe in that unconditional healing, loving energy up into our heart. Just making that connection to light. It's grounding. It's soothing. It's calming. Then we make our connection to our soul or to source or to creation or to God. However you see and say that. And we take in that breath from that light into the heart. There we are in the heart space. Our consciousness is within our physical heart. And then we are connected to the earth and we are connected to creation, to God. Now then, if you can just imagine yourself inside of this pyramid here, that's just where we find that field of neutrality. That field beyond duality. It's just a higher field. You might feel that tingling in your, in your crown. You might feel that expansion coming out from the pineal. And if the energy gets overwhelming, just picture your heart again. And then bringing that light down into the core of the earth. So let's just drop ourselves right down into the center of the earth down into that heart of Gaia, that crystal sun within the earth. Beautiful. Now as we are down there within that light of the earth, with our light, let's expand our lights together, all of us and the earth. And we expand that light like a sun. And it just expands through the earth itself. All the way to the surface of the planet. And again, we are still connected to our soul, to creation, to God, to source, to the universe, and to the earth. 
And so all of that is light. And all of that we are bringing in first to the center of the earth and we're expanding that out throughout the planet. And now then, let's send that beam of light up to our local sun. And all we're doing is we're just holding that high vibration space, making that connection. Our local sun is a huge portal. And we're just bringing that unconditional love throughout all of it, throughout everybody on the planet. And just keep expanding out, expanding that light from the earth, from you. Just expanding it into all of creation. Because with it, it carries that field of universal peace. It carries that harmony. And it covers that field of neutrality. It covers everything with the field of neutrality. Instead of the duality, instead of the fighting, the good, the bad, the right, the wrong. The field of neutrality just brings it to a higher perspective. Out of things having to be good or bad. Brings good and bad into alignment with the higher creation. So you could say it shifts those things that are perceivedly bad. If they are non-beneficial to creation, they shift. But again, when we do this work from the heart, we are doing it without judgment. Because sometimes what is perceivedly bad is actually perfectly divine from that higher perspective. So when we use our heart to expand our light, we're not judging. We are simply bringing light to it. All right, then bringing all of that back down into your heart. and you are still expanded out throughout your being, you are expanded out throughout your home, your neighborhood, but it all starts right from within your heart. Stay in that expansive space for as long as you can today. Awesome. Thank you all for being here. We'll see you next time.